Welcome to GPOGuy.com, session number 100.2, Introduction to the Group Policy Management Console, Part 1. In this session, I'm going to start off by talking about some of the capabilities in the Group Policy Management Console, which I introduced in session 100.1, Introduction to Group Policy. The Group Policy Management Console was a tool that was released um, around the time that Server 2003 shipped. It's um, uh, only, it will only run on Windows XP and Server 2003 systems, but you can use it to manage Windows 2000 systems, and I'm going to show you that here. So let's go ahead and get started um, running the Group Policy Management Console. The way I like to start it is to simply open up a, a run dialog and type gpmc.msc. And that'll bring up the first time. What you'll see is a blank uh, MMC console with the Group Policy Management node. If I right-click that node and select Add Forest, I can add my uh, forests or domains, in this case, that I want to manage. Um, I'm going to add my cpanel.com domain. And I'm also going to add that, that, that cpanel.com domain is, is in a uh, Server 2003 forest. I'm going to go ahead and add my Windows 2000 forest as well. So you can see I can now manage uh, multiple forests from within GPMC. Um, and they can be either Server 2003 or Windows 2000 forests. Um, the thing that you need to keep in mind is, um, is the there needs to be some kind of trust relationship between uh, these domains that you want to manage and you need to have permissions in order to uh, both read and modify group policy objects in forests outside of the ones in which you're running the GPMC. So for example, I'm running GPMC right now on a workstation within the cpandle.com forest. Um, if I want to manage the test.tld forest, I need to have permissions from this user account that I'm running as in this on this workstation I need to have permissions into that that foreign uh, test at TLD forest and actually what you can see is if I go ahead and expand this that I only have uh, essentially read access in other words if I right click this particular GPO um, things like edit and, f and being able to change the flags and in, in on a group policy object are grayed out so I don't have anything other than read access to this forest so let's go ahead and, and drill into uh, some of the capabilities of uh, Group Policy Management Console um, within um, this particular forest, the cpandle.com domain. First thing you'll notice is if you expand the domains um, uh, node, um, all of the domains listed in this forest will be shown. In this case, I only have one, and that's the cpandle.com domain. If I expand that, I can um, I will notice all of the um, group policy objects and containers within my AD environment. Now you'll notice that that if I if I wanted to drill into, for example, the marketing OU, that even though the OUs themselves are listed, the objects within AD are not listed. GPMC is geared towards um, showing you information about group policy. It's not a replacement for AD users and computers, for example. Um, also listed here, and you'll notice, is the sites container. Um, because sites are not specific to a given domain, it's listed separate from um, the cpandle.com domain, but, it's, but it is listed within the, the forest that, that I've currently focused on. And if I right-click this, I can say Show Sites, and in this case I have one site, and I can go ahead and select it. And then from there I can manage group policy objects that might be linked to this site. In this case I don't have any. Um, another nice feature of Group Policy Management Console is I can do a search at the domain level, I'm sorry, at the forest level, to search for different kinds of group policies. So if I select, if I right click the forest and select search, I can um, search throughout all domains in this forest, or I can choose a single domain. In this case, I'll just leave it at the default. And I can search for um, either a particular group policy name, uh, a, a group policy link, or a security group, a user configuration, a computer configuration, or a GUID. So let's say I wanted to search for a, a particular um, GPO, a user-specific GPO setting, um, and I can say either contains or does not contain. Um, and then I can choose a policy area within the user configuration area. So let's see, let's say I want to see all group policy objects in this forest that have software installation policy set. If I click Add here and go ahead and say Search, it will return a list of all GPOs that have software installation policy set on them. 
And then I can go ahead and edit from this dialog, or I can save those results, or I can uh, close this. So that's a nice feature, being able to search for a particular set of functionality within uh, a forest, um, a particular uh, type of capability that's being implemented within a GPO. Now let's look at um, how Group Policy Management Console presents group policy-related information. There's, there's two things to be aware of. Um, as you know, when you create a group policy object by default, let's say you're doing it in AD users and computers, um, when you right-click on a domain or you right-click on an OU and you, create, and you say new, new group policy object, what happens is the group policy object is created in the domain and then it's also linked to the container that you're focused on. And you don't see that when you're doing this process within AD users and computers. Um, the difference with between that tool and GPMC is that there is a distinction made between linking and the actual group policy object. So if we go to cpanel.com here, which is the domain container, you'll see that there are two GPOs represented here, the default domain policy and test domain. These are GPO links to the cpanel.com domain. Similarly, if I go down to the engineering OU or the marketing OU, you'll see that I have a Windows Firewall Policy GPO linked at the marketing OU level. If I drill into users, you'll see I have a number of group policy objects that are linked at the users level. So um, there's a distinction made between the link, which you which you see represented here by the little arrow on the icon, and if I go into this group policy objects container and expand it, these, are, these represent the actual group policy objects within that domain, the defined group policy objects, regardless of whether they're linked or not within this domain. So now if I go and right-click one of these, you'll see I can edit that, and it'll bring up group policy editor on that group policy object. Now if I were to go up to one of the links and right-click on it, I could do the same thing. But in this case, it's just being aware that you're managing or looking at a link rather than the group policy object is the important distinction. Now, let's look at some of the options that I get when I uh, right-click on a container, for example. If I right-click on a container, in this case the domain, you'll see that I have a number of options. I can create and link a GPO. In that, in that situation, it's emulating what AD users and computers does in that it creates the GPO and links it automatically to the domain level. I can, I can link an existing GPO. So let's say I want to do that. What happens is all of the GPOs within this domain are listed, and I can choose one of them and say OK. And you'll see that uh, a, a link to this GP processing policy is added to that domain container. I can set up block inheritance. A block inheritance is a flag that is set on the container itself, in this case the domain, that says don't let any upstream group policies um, be processed um, by users or computers that are within this container, in this case the domain. So um, in, because the group policy processing order moves in the direction of the local GPO being processed first, then the site, any site link GPOs, then any domain link GPOs, and then any OU link GPOs, what setting block inheritance does at the domain level is it blocks any of those site linked GPOs from being processed. So the um, block inheritance capability is relevant at the domain level and at the OU level, and that's where you'll see it show up. It's not relevant at the site level. I can run a group policy modeling um, session against the domain, um, against this container. Um, I can set up, I can actually create a new organizational unit, which is um, a, the, pretty much the only um, AD related management capability you have here. I can perform a search on the domain instead of at the forest level. I can focus the GPMC console on a different domain controller. What this means is that I'm basically um, uh, telling GPMC to do its operations against a domain controller other than the PDC emulator, which is the one that is chosen by default when you first start up and connect to a domain using GPMC. I can remove this particular domain from being managed by GPMC. I can launch AD users and computers if I chose to do so. 
And then, of course, I've got the, the standard capabilities for um, viewing and uh, launching a new window. I can choose properties, and what that'll do is basically show me the same kind of um, uh, dialog box or property page that I would get if I were in 80 users and computers and had right-clicked on that domain object. So quite a few capabilities that you get when you're at the container level. If I go to the marketing OU, you'll, think, you'll see that I have a number of uh, basically similar settings here. Um, and similarly, if I, if I were to go down to the um, sites container and go ahead and click on one of these sites, I have a few less options. I can link an existing GPO. I can't create and link from the site, but I can link an existing one. I can remove the site, and I can, of course, view the properties on the site. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, what happens when you right-click on a group policy object. First of all, let's look at what happens when I right-click on the group policy objects container. You'll see I have a number of options. I can create a new GPO from here, in which case, when I go ahead and select that, um, I can give it a name. Let's call it uh, my test GPO. And what happens is they, a, a basically empty GPO is created in the domain, and you'll see it added to the list, and then I can go ahead and, and edit it or view the information on it, and I'll get to the information on the right side here in a second. Let's go back to the group policy container, group policy objects container, and now I will go ahead and choose either backup all for uh, creating a backup of all GPOs, or I can manage backups. I can open the migration table editor, which is used for importing G GPOs across domains. Um, and that actually will be discussed in a future video training session. I can have a different option for viewing uh, group policy objects. Um, so basically, I have a number of things I can do. Um, I can, uh, if, I, if I actually go into a particular GPO, and click on and right click on it you'll see that I have a number of options I can set I can edit it I can go into and change its status so in other words I can disable it or I can disable parts of the GPO for example the user configuration settings only or the computer configuration settings only now um, what what happens in that case is let's say I disabled user configuration settings any policy that's set on the user side of the GPO would be ignored by users processing that policy. So um, it's, it's often used in scenarios where you've got a GPO that's only doing, for example, uh, a particular um, uh, side of the GPO and you don't want to have it be processed, have the user side or the computer side be processed because you're not using it. Um, it saves a little bit of time in, in processing because when you set that flag then that user side doesn't have to be processed. But typically it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just a complexity thing rather than uh, anything that's going to be tremendously beneficial to use. Um, backup uh, lets me back up an individual GPO and let's walk through that just so you can uh, see a little bit about how that works. Um, I can basically choose, choose a location, uh, give a description of the backup, and then say backup. And I'll talk a little bit more about backups in the next, next session, in the part two session of the GPMC. Here's an example of a GPO that's been disabled. You can see that the icon is grayed out. Um, if I go ahead and re right click on it and choose GPO status, you'll see that um, all settings are dis disabled have been, has been uh, selected. Um, again, restore from backup, um, import settings. These are uh, topics that I'll go into in the in the next session. Um, and also, creating reports on um, on GPOs is is another area that I'll cover off in the next session. Okay. Let's go down to WMI filters, and you can see an example of how WMI filters are managed using GPMC. Um, as you know, GPM, GP, or, uh, Group Policy introduced the notion of WMI filters for controlling processing of Group Policy in Server 2003, and XP clients can process uh, WMI filters. Windows 2000 clients cannot. If I go ahead and select this one that I've created, I've created this uh, SP2 WMI filter that essentially tests for um, XP SP2 on a particular machine. If I go ahead and edit this filter, you'll see the basic structure of this. I can uh, give it a name and a description. 
and then the actual query that is performed is stored here and if I go in and say edit you'll see that basically I've chosen the uh, default root simv2 namespace which is where most of the information that you're probably going to be interested in uh, resides within WMI um, and then the actual query is uh, typed in by hand here where I say select star from Win32 operating system class where the property caption equals Windows XP professional and the CSD version which is the property that stores the service pack level is equal to service pack 2 and it's easy to build a WMI filter um, if you have a tool such as Scriptomatic, which is uh, a free download from Microsoft's TechNet Scripting Center for uh, creating WMI queries um, sort of on the fly. Um, you can also download the WMI SDK, and there's a WMI browser utility that lets you browse the WMI namespace on a given machine, and then you can get a sense of the kind of information that you can grab out of WMI, the names of the classes, the names of the properties, etc. So that's essentially the um, WMI filter capability. Now, if I wanted to um, link a WMI filter to a particular group policy object, I could do that. And I can simply right click in this link area and say add, and it lets me choose a GPO that I want to link to. Similarly, if I had expanded the group policy objects container, I could go down and drag a WMI filter onto a group policy object, and uh, basically that group policy object would be linked to that WMI filter. Um, and since I'm talking about dragging and dropping, another useful piece of the group policy management console is it does allow uh, certain drag and drop op operations. For example, if I wanted to link a GPO to a particular OU or domain or a site, I could simply left click on that GPO in the GPO container, in the group policy objects container, and drag it up to the OU. And when I do that, I'm essentially linking that GPO to that container. So let's go to um, a particular GPO. Uh, in this case, I'll go to the Corporate IP Security Policy GPO. And you can see some information on the right about how this group policy object is, uh, some of the details around it. For example, the Security Filtering tab gives you the ability to view who can process uh, this group policy object, which groups uh, are available or currently configured to process the uh, group policy object. From here, I can actually look at, the in the Details tab, I can actually look at some of the status information for this GPO, such as who created it, when it was created, when it was last modified, whether the AD and SysVol portions of the GPO are in sync, what its GUID is, in this case, that's this number here. Um, and then I can, again, uh, as you saw earlier, I can control the uh, status of this GPO. Um, so um, basically, uh, the, the options that you saw when I right-clicked on a GPO and chose GPO status are available on this tab. Um, I can also, if I hit click on the settings tab, I can actually see a report that contains all of the settings that were in this GPO. And if I just expand this by saying show all, you'll see that uh, in this case only IPsec policy is set on this particular GPO. And then finally, and I'll go into delegation some more in the next session, you can see who's, who's, who's available to edit and, and delegate and manage, delete, etc. This, um, this GPO. Now finally, what I want to do is, is focus on a container and show you some of the information that's available in the right panel on the container level. So as you can see here, um, the, the, the linked group policy objects tab shows you for a given container the order of, that multiple GPOs are linked to this container. And the order controls the processing within that container level. So in, in the case of this particular object, this domain object, and these three group policy objects, you'll see that default domain policy is in, is in order number one, test domain is order number two, and GP processing policy is number three. Um, now, what this means is that GP processing policy is processed first by clients then test domain, and then default domain policy under the assumption that last writer wins. And so if I wanted to change, for example, the GP processing policy to have it be a higher precedent than test domain, I could just click on that, click this arrow, and it would move it up into the processing so that it would pro process second instead of um, third. Now, 
I can right click on a particular GPO within this and, and keep in mind that I'm, 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 I'm right clicking on a link rather than the actual GPO and then I have a number of options so for example I can set the link to be enforced and enforced is essentially the opposite of block inheritance so enforced is set on a GPO link and it lets me say um, it doesn't matter what block inheritance flags have been set above always process this GPO so if I had, for example, set a block inheritance on the engineering OU um, so that um, essentially trying to block upstream group policy objects from processing, I could set this GP processing policy to enforced and it would basically trump the block inheritance flag. Um, I could also, also disable the link at this point. So I could say disable this link and essentially the link is no longer active this means that this group policy link is just simply not processed it's there but it's not active and then I can also uh, I'll go ahead and, and re-enable that link um, and then I can also uh, generate a report from uh, this GPO and I can edit this GPO so these are the uh, capabilities that are available within uh, group policy uh, within the uh, container level um, Essentially, um, there's uh, the group policy inheritance uh, page, which shows you um, some sort of uh, gross level information about um, uh, the links at this level, whether they're enabled, whether there's any WMI filters associated with them. Um, so uh, essentially, if I was down lower in the hierarchy, uh, for example, at the engineering OU, and I selected group policy inheritance, I would see all the GPOs that would be processed uh, by the users and computers within underneath this OU um, in the order in which they'd be processed. And this includes, uh, as you can see here, my three GPOs that are linked to the domain as well as my uh, one GPO that's linked to the engineering OU. And then finally, the delegation um, uh, uh, for when you're when you're focused on a container uh, on a container, the delegation tab uh, lets you control some of the container level permissions that you can do uh, related to group policy. And again, I'll talk about this in the next session. And that concludes part one of our introduction to GPMC.